you guys really love hearing about these mutants, huh? That's okay, because I love talking about them. I'm Adam Andrews, and this is what part six of the top 10 mutant powers much stronger than you think. Number 10, Emma Frost. She's probably the biggest name on this list. It almost feels like everyone knows her powers, but someone suggested her in the comments, and well, yeah, she's awesome. Emma Frost possesses telepathic abilities on a similar level to Charles Xavier. She's been referred to as an Omega-class telepath and has demonstrated the ability to stalemate Exodus and overcome telepaths such as Nate Gray and Rachel Summers through greater experience and skill. With her telepathy, Emma Frost can create psionic shields, telepathic cloaking, telepathic illusions. She can absorb information and upload information into others. Emma can project one's astral form from their body onto the astral planes or the physical planes. She can inhibit others' powers, induce pain, erase a person's memories, and heal mental trauma through psychic surgery. She has intuitive multilingualism, mind control, can create mental links, induce mental paralysis and sedation. She can alter other's minds cause a kind of mental amnesia. She can telepathically detect and track others, not to mention produce psionic blasts and psionic lightning. And that's not mentioning her secondary mutation of a diamond form. This grants her super durability, strength, and stamina, as well as psychic immunity, but at the cost of her psychic powers. Number 9, Black Tom Cassidy. Black Tom Cassidy is the cousin of Sean Cassidy, who's Banshee, and he was originally a longtime crime partner to the villain Juggernaut. But his powers are interesting to say the least. Originally, his mutant power was bioorganic thermokinetic blasts, generating concussive blasts of force through any wooden medium. Normally, it was a, forgive my pronunciation, a shillalag, which is a traditional Irish wooden fighting stick. Tell me if I messed it up in the comments, please. After a fight with Cable, doctors grafted a wood like substance onto his wounds, healing him and allowing him to channel his bio blast directly through. Through his fists. But as a result of a genetic virus, the substance spread over Tom's whole body, turning him into a Groot like looking dude, which actually worked to his benefit as the secondary mutation gave him plant growth, allowing him to grow to immense size, superhuman strength a healing factor, chlorokinesis, which is control over plant life within his vicinity. He could distribute his consciousness among plants he controlled, and Cassidy could drain the life force of organic beings. He eventually returned to a human form, but kept the capacity to control plants to a limited degree, mainly focusing his powers on wood specifically, and using the energy channeling aspect of his powers, he could increase his striking power to generate protective shielding. Number eight, Sebastian Shaw. Sebastian Shaw is a mutant that you'll probably best recognize for being the Black King of the Hellfire Club, or the guy who somehow took out Darwin in the X-Men First Class movie. I still think that was dumb. His powers are actually a bit different from that movie though. Shaw has the ability to absorb energy, specifically all forms of kinetic energy directed at him and use it to enhance his strength, speed, and stamina. This includes physical damage such as that sustained in battle and kinetic blasts such as Cyclops optic blasts or Gamma's explosions. That's why you'll sometimes see him punching walls, being hit by his own underlings, or allowing himself to be hit by his foes in order to build up more and more of the kinetic energy to empower himself. He can also absorb and use other forms of energy such as electricity and magical energy as shown in Avengers Academy when fighting Hercules. He can build up and store this energy and release it whenever he chooses. His biggest power, however, comes in the form of being such a powerful and influential figure in the Hellfire Club. Number seven, Jason Wingard. Jason Wingard, otherwise known as Mastermind, is basically an illusionist, but a very, very powerful one. He can psionically manipulate the senses of other people, causing them to see, hear, touch, smell, and or taste things which do not actually exist or see, hear, touch, smell, and or taste real things in ways that they would not do naturally. So, for example, he can seem to make a solid wall appear in an empty space, or he can make himself look and sound like a different person, or look and feel like a wall or even seem invisible. Since his power only affects the mind, his illusions cannot be recorded with cameras or anything like that, but his power is so strong that even if his victims know they are being subjected to an illusion, they will still react to the illusion as if it were reality, unless they can rid themselves of all 
suspicion that it is indeed reality, which sounds a little confusing. Basically, if Mastermind creates the illusion of a wall, most people, even if they know it's an illusion, will still be unable to walk through that wall. His most famous usage of his power, in my opinion, is when he attempted to manipulate Jean Grey, which led to that whole dark phoenix thing. Good job, dude. Number six, Sunspot. Roberto da Costa is another mutant that a lot of people have heard of, especially in the more recent stories that have been coming out of Marvel. But that doesn't mean everyone knows his powers. Bobby da Costa's mutant ability allows him to store solar energy in his cells through a similar method to the way we store energy when we eat food. He can then release it when necessary to enhance his physical strength, usually with the side effect of his body being cloaked in darkness because he drains all the ambient light from his skin, which sounds really cool. The enhancements to his strength through this radiation have allowed him to knock down an alternate universe Hulk, even drawing blood and even restraining Gladiator of the Shi'ar. But other than his physical enhancements, he has also used the energy he absorbs to fly faster than light speed, use pyro and thermokinesis, firing blasts of heat and dark solar plasma, as well as using photokinesis directing light. He's also incredibly tricksy, displayed when he recently manipulated Iska the Unbeaten. I just love this character. Number five, Trevor Fitzroy. Trevor here, who goes just by Fitzroy, is actually from Earth 1191. There, he was the illegitimate son of Anthony Shaw, the Black King of the Hellfire Club. Trevor's mutant ability was to drain other living beings of their life force, converting it into energy and absorbing it into himself, usually disintegrating his victims. With this life force, he can do a few different things, like opening temporal wormholes to travel across time and space, teleportation, shifting objects into different time frames, altering the flow of time to return people or objects to a previous incarnation, and freezing people in a type of stasis. The thing is, the usage of his power depends on the life force he absorbs. So for example, one wormhole would be equivalent to one person's life force. It's a little scary to be honest. He did get a big power boost in the Bishop The Last X-Men series where he tries to become time itself. He is a super cool and super super dangerous character. Definitely check him out. Number four, Harold Leland. Harold Leland was an alcoholic and obese corporate lawyer and also a mutant with the abilities to increase the mass or gravity of a person or object within his line of sight. He can use this ability to increase mass all at once or over time, slowly increasing the more a victim struggles. The power has shown to even break the ground beneath a target depending on the strength of that ground. So for example, there was a time that he sent Wolverine from inside inside the Hellfire Club all the way through the floor and the ground into the sewers. Also, the human targets would suffer great strain in their muscles, particularly in the heart, with the possibility of suffering physical damage. And if Leland uses his power on an item, that item could crumble if it wasn't particularly durable. Leland joined the Hellfire Club, an elite social club for the rich and wealthy located in New York's Fifth Avenue, under Sebastian Shaw. He isn't the most impressive fighter, but his ability has come in handy more than a few times. Number three. Three, Emma Steed. Emma Steed is actually the Black Queen of the London Hellfire Club. If you are noticing a lot of Hellfire Club members here, that's because there are a lot with very cool powers and not a lot of people know much about them at all. For example, Emma Steed here has a rare form of telepathic power called psionic skinning. This basically allows Emma to create blades of pure psionic energy to attack and disable her foes. These blades aren't purely for physical attack. They actually allow her to do a number of things like warping the minds of people, igniting pain sensors, destroying physical portions of their brain, and destroying psionic forms or astral projections. Using this ability, she was able to de-life the Shadow King, who is a incredibly powerful telepath. As a secondary result of her powers, she is basically immune to any type of psionic or telepathic attack, with her presence being absolutely destructive to telepaths. Number two, Korra of the Burning Heart. Can we just get an applause for literally the coolest name ever? Like, Korra of the Burning Heart. That's awesome. Korra of the Burning Heart is a mutant from Morocco where she served as an assassin and primarily used her power only to boost her own abilities in battle, thanks to the Iraqi being really stubborn, honor-bound fighters. But Korra's abilities can indeed help others as well. Korra's heart is an internalized combustion furnace, which generates life force energy. Thanks to that energy, she gets this really awesome looking flaming skeletal appearance, and she uses this constant energy source to give herself 
incredible physical capabilities, as well as boost up the powers of others around her to even greater heights. She was a member of the X Terminators alongside Cable, and she is also a part of Sword. Also, Korra of the Burning Heart. Sorry, just wanted to say it again. Super cool. Number 1. Amelia Vought Amelia was a mutant born with the ability to transubstantiate solid matter into vapor that she can control. And honestly, it's such a great ability. Seeing the things she can do with this ability is really cool. I said she can transubstantiate matter, and that is including herself and other people. When she turns herself into vapor, she is obviously unharmed by physical attacks, but can then fly through the air as vapor and pass through small holes or cracks. But the vapor is still physically there, which means she can still move objects as vapor. She has also turned her allies into vapor to get them out of dangerous situations, substantiating them beside her. And she's even stolen weapons off of enemies, turning them into vapor, which she then reformed in her own hands. But wait, there's more. Using the astral plane, Amelia is able to transport herself and anything else across the surface of the globe in an instant, even summoning distant people to herself by telling teleportation, converting them into mist and then bringing that mist into her presence to be reformed. It's just super cool. But alas, that's all I got for y'all today. Honestly, when I was looking up these mutants, I discovered even more mutants that would easily make up a part 7. So if you're loving this series, definitely drop a comment, like, and subscribe, and we will 100% give you another. Make sure to check out parts 1 through 5 too. I've been your host, Adam Andrews. Check me out on Instagram, and until next time, stay safe out there, nerds.